What I find truly amazing is how a movie, and specifically the making of one, could be clouded in such controversy. In March of 1969, author Mario Puzo originally published his infamous novel, The Godfather, a book that topped the New York Times bestsellers list for approximately six months. Paramount Pictures purchased the rights of the book for $80,000. When the production of the movie started in New York, it was welcomed by the wrath of the Colombo family. Joe Colombo, not only the boss of the family, but the head of the Italian-American Civil Rights League, was extremely displeased with the movie. He had the Teamsters Union demand truck drivers and film crews to refuse to work. Almost everyone involved with the movie's production was threatened. The movie's producer had the windows of his car shot out one night outside his house. Even the sets and equipment was sabotaged. It all came to a head when a meeting was held at the Park Sheridan Hotel in Manhattan. In attendance was Joe Colombo, Russell Buffalino, and the film's producer, Al Ruddy. When Colombo was handed the movie script, he asked, what does this mean, fade in? Which stands for the beginning of a scene, and naturally fade out, or fade to black, is the end of the scene. Al Ruddy assured them that the movie wasn't about corrupt Italians. He also agreed to remove all references to the Mafia and Cosa Nostra, which was Colombo's main issue. He also didn't want Italians being stereotyped, which is funny if you think about it. Most people believe all Italians are connected to the mob, which isn't true. One of the characters in the movie is Johnny Fontaine, a singer who once had a contract with a band leader that wouldn't release him from the contract. The godfather, Vito Corleone, sent Luca Brazzi to threaten the band leader that either his brains or signature would be on the release paper. Real-life singer Al Martino was given the part to play Johnny Fontaine. But following Francis Ford Coppola, who joined the production as the director, he gave the role to singer Vic Damone. What allegedly played out next mirrors the background of the fictional Johnny Fontaine character. Al Martino reached out to boss Russell Buffalino, and in no time, Martino was given the role back. During the same time frame, another singer, Frank Sinatra, who, like Joe Colombo, was unhappy with the movie, and more specifically, the novel The Godfather, because he believed the character Johnny Fontaine mirrored himself and was modeled after him. In 1942, Sinatra had a similar incident take place with his contract with band leader Tommy Dorsey. One afternoon, Sinatra happened to run into Puzo at the L.A. restaurant Chasen's. Puzo was with the actor John Wayne when someone suggested introducing him to Sinatra. But Sinatra was adamant about not meeting Puzo and said, I don't think so. I don't want to meet him. And then began yelling at Puzo. Puzo attempted to explain that it wasn't his idea. He was referring to meeting him, but Sinatra took it that he was talking about the character Johnny Fontaine and told him, who told you to put that in your book, your publisher? And then threatened to beat the hell out of Puzo if it weren't for the fact that he was much younger. Puzo would say about the incident, what hurt was, here he was a northern Italian threatening me, a southern Italian, with physical violence. Sinatra had a relationship and was considered an associate of Genovese underboss Willie Moretti, who allegedly was the one that put a gun in band leader Tommy Dorsey's mouth and threatened to kill him if he didn't release Sinatra out of the contract. Initially, Al Martino was warned about acting in the Godfather movie and was specifically told he would face serious consequences if he did. After Mario Puzo's run-in with Sinatra, Al Martino called Puzo up to find out exactly what happened. The first thing Puzo said was, do these guys carry guns? But Martino assured him that nothing would happen to him and told Puzo, promise me you'll not cut the part out because that's what he wants to do. Frank wants you to cut it out. Another person warned Martino, if you take the role, Sinatra will ban you from Las Vegas. What's funny is, Frank Sinatra was so against the Godfather movie, and the Johnny Fontaine character in particular, yet after his confrontation with Puzo, he called Francis Ford Coppola and asked if he would cast him for the Vito Corleone part. That part was already given to Marlon Brando. A comical incident took place during the filming of the movie. Lenny Montana, who was a Colombo associate who played Luca Brazzi, 
walked into a restaurant in Little Italy and pulled out a camera that he took from the set and told everyone, look what I got. It must be worth 50000 Russell Buffalino, who was in the restaurant, yelled at him, what the fuck are you doing? Bring it back right now, you fucking idiot. Don't ever let me see or hear about you ever taking anything else from there. Fast forward to 1993, during a racketeering trial, a conversation that was recorded by the FBI was played in Manhattan Federal Court. Members of the Gambino family's Sicilian faction, which included Joe and John Gambino and Lorenzo Menino, were on trial at the time. The conversation took place in 1988 in Cafe Giardino, which was on 18th Avenue in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and owned by the Gambino brothers, and also headquarters for the Sicilian faction who were members of the Gambino family that operated quasi-independently. Their power was a direct result from the money they made through narcotics trafficking. At the time, John Gambino was the captain of the Sicilian faction. So during the trial, which started in February 1993, a tape of the conversation was played in open court. That trial ended in a mistrial, where the defendants pled guilty in exchange for 15-year sentences. Anyway, on the tape, Lorenzo Menino could be heard speaking to an associate. See if you can do him a favor. Talk to Frank Sinatra about getting a few jobs for Al Martino in Las Vegas. Keep in mind, this is almost two decades later after The Godfather went into production. Also, please remember to like this video if you haven't already, as it helps with YouTube's algorithm. And if anyone wants to help keep this podcast going, you can do so down below with the super thanks icon or by the links for PayPal and Cash App in the video's description. And thank you. Lorenzo caught himself off by remembering an important fact and stated, Sinatra can't stand Al Martino. The older and more seasoned John Gambino confirmed it by saying, yeah, I know. Apparently, Lorenzo received the request to help out Al Martino from a friend of Russell Buffalino. Buffalino was in federal prison, serving 10 years for conspiracy to murder a witness that was in the witness protection program. We know a few things by hearing this whole story. At the onset, the mob was dead set against the making of the movie The Godfather. That is until the words Mafia and Cosa Nostra were removed from the script of the movie. But what truly changed the mob's mind is the producer Al Ruddy offered to donate a million dollars to the Italian-American Civil Rights League. The mob also had influence over what actors receive parts in the movie, hence Al Martino's part. And lastly, Frank Sinatra held grudges that even the Gambino family couldn't dissuade. 